So you're on a bit of a budget and you want a gaming mouse. So you're thinking compromise. See, I don't like that. I don't like that just because we have less money to spend, we can't have nice things. I think it's at the very least important to do our research and find out if we can get that proper bang for buck device. So with that spirit in mind, today's video sets out to try and find a mouse that not only fulfills your office and gaming needs, but does it in style. We're going to try and find something that's also ergonomic and to top it all off, we're going to make sure it's wireless. Why wireless, you ask? Well, there's a reason all the pros are using wireless these days. And also, it's 2021. You, you don't need that cable mess and you certainly don't need that cable drag when you're breaking ankles and clicking heads in game. And we're going to try and do all of that in under $25. <laughs> Okay, so how do we go about doing this? First, we have to lay some ground rules. What is it that makes a mouse a gaming mouse? Because anything can be an office mouse. But to be a gaming mouse, in my opinion, there need to be three things. Number one, adjustable DPI. The ability to either custom set a DPI or to be able to switch DPI between some presets. DPI is dots per inch, basically a measure of how fine a movement the sensor can pick up within an inch of distance. Number two, a mouse button layout that is fit for gamers. So we need left click, right click, a scroll wheel, a DPI shift button, and at least two side buttons. And finally, the sensor polling rate. Now, polling rate is basically the number of times the mouse sensor checks for movement. A combination of DPI and polling rate usually defines how fine a movement your mouse can pick up. I'm thinking a polling rate of at least 250 hertz or higher is preferable, any lower than that, and it's like a normal mouse. Now, with these criteria in mind, along with our $25 budget, I searched for mice across three different online retailers. Amazon, Flipkart for our Indian viewers, and AliExpress. The idea being anything we talk about today and my eventual recommendation will be available across not one, but all of these three websites. And the reason for that is whoever's watching this video, no matter where you're living, you will most likely be able to order these mice. Now, needless to say, there were a lot of options. So I started eliminating the ones that were obvious. Now, I was suspicious about any mouse that seemed to lean too much towards the gamer aesthetic because it seemed like they were trying to compensate for their lack of technical specifications. And sure enough, most of the mice that lent very hard on gamer aesthetics didn't have any tech specs listed. So it was easy to cancel those out. And after a couple of days of muddling through a lot of really pointless options, I came across five devices that I wanted to finally order. We have four of those in the studio today. The last one didn't quite make it, but we'll get to that later. So let's start with these two. This is the K30 and the K66, the two mice that are from the same seller. And I say seller and not brand because look, this is what the box says and this is what the mouse says. This is the font they decided to go with. You tell me what that says. Either ways, between the K30 and the K66, both mouse are around the same price and the K30 is touted as something that's fit for both office work as well as gaming, although the aesthetic clearly points to a more office oriented approach. And this is reinforced by the fact that it has this little button that takes you back to the desktop no matter which window you're in. Add to that the fact that the button clicks are actually very, very quiet. That's not to say they're bad. They actually felt pretty good. And in fact, they had a very short travel. So if you're trying to spam click for say a single fire weapon, this is going to help you out a little bit. The scroll wheel actually felt really good. It had that rubber tire track thing going on on top and it has a DPI shift button. Now the side mouse buttons were good to click, but in my experience, they were a little too small, a little too recessed and a little too far back in the body to be easily found by my thumb. Flip the mouse over and you see some very respectable large PTFE feet, which enable this mouse to glide over my cloth mouse pad quite comfortably. Now in contrast, the K66 is clearly a little more gamer focused. I would go so far as to say that this mouse was, let's say, inspired by certain other more expensive mouse brands. And that's fine. Look, at this price point, if you're going to copy someone, that is understandable. Just make sure you do it right. Just make sure you do it faithfully because you know that shape works. Someone somewhere in a company much larger than yours has figured out a shape that works. And to their credit, the K66 copies it very, very well. This is a very comfortable, lightweight mouse to use, what with that honeycomb structure, and the mouse buttons all feel pretty good to click. In this case, the side mouse buttons are better positioned for the thumb and are nice and wide, although a little bit mushy. As for the scroll wheel, funnily enough, the K30 scroll wheel actually felt better. Turn the mouse around and you've got four mouse feet that look very much like the glorious Model O mouse feet, but here's the really, really confusing part. These mouse feet are not 
not PTFE. Instead, they seem to have tacked on hard pieces of plastic. And this baffles me because the office-centric mouse has the better mouse feet. Using this mouse, to game on my cloth mouse pad was like trying to skate on a skateboard that had no wheels and was upside down. It was rough. Now I did go online and find some mouse feet that would probably fit these for about 10 to $14. And if you want this mouse shape, which is very comfortable, then I would recommend you buy those mouse feet and tack it onto these. Now in game, both these mice seem to have the same sensor. They range from 800 to 2400 DPI and they behaved roughly the same. Although there were two issues that I would like to bring to your attention. Number one is the lift off height. And what this means is basically as you lift the mouse off the mouse pad, the height at which the sensor stops sensing movement movement is the lift off height. In my opinion, you want a lower lift off height because if you're a low sensitivity gamer and if you run out of mouse pad, you might want to reposition the mouse by lifting it up and bringing it back to the center, but you don't necessarily want the mouse cursor to move. Now, a shorter lift off distance would mean that you wouldn't have to put in as much effort lifting the mouse so far off the mouse pad, which is great for fast paced games where you might have to do that quickly. Unfortunately, both these mouse had a lift off distance that was a little bit too high for my comfort. The other issue is when I subjected both these mice to what I call the insane flick test. And what I do is basically I pick a low sensitivity, 800 DPI in this case. I place the mouse on one end of a mouse pad and flick as hard and as fast as I can to the other end of the mouse pad. And then I see if the sensor holds up. Unfortunately, both of these failed that test. In both cases, the sensor would stall somewhere along the flick and it would seem like the mouse cursor hit a brick wall or would either swerve upwards or downwards, neither of which is very useful in game. Now, I'd like to mention that this will only affect you if you are a low sensitivity gamer and you want to flick very fast and very wide. To be honest, if they handled that flick test fine, I would have recommended either one of these mice because in all other respects, they are pretty good except for those mouse feet. Now this mouse here is the K-Snake BM600 and on the face of it, I was hoping that it would fix the flaws with the K66 with a better mouse feed, and it does. It has better mouse feed. It has a very ergonomic right-handed design with a very pronounced hump in the middle, which is a little bit uncomfortable for my hand size, but if you're a palm grip mouse user with a larger hand, then I suspect this is going to be quite comfortable for you. It's also a little more lightweight, although it did feel just a little bit more cheap. When I used this in game, my game lasted for about two and a half minutes and then I died. But before I died, I was let down so badly and so many times by this mouse that I just cannot for a second even bother recommending it. Look, this is what it's called. It's the K-Snake BM600. If you see this mouse in any of those websites, you might want to click away. Which brings us to this guy. This is the Red Dragon Mirage. This mouse came in this, as opposed to the T66, which came in this cardboard box thingy. This came in its own case. Inside the case was a user manual that was much better written than anything else we have and a little Red Dragon sticker. Pretty cool. Now the mouse itself feels solid. It's a little bit heavier, but you can tell right away that the construction quality is very good. The top of the mouse has this soft touch rubberized feel, which I don't know if it'll hold up to use over time, whether it'll start looking bad or not. Right now, out of the box, it feels great. The sides of the mouse are hard plastic, but they do have this 3D pattern to help you grip the mouse better. At the bottom are five small PTFE skates that work pretty well and it also has a slot for a double A battery. Now I want to point out that this mouse is a very obviously right-handed mouse and you can tell that by looking at it head on. You see how it slants off to one side a bit? Well, this is so that it doesn't force your hand to lie flat on the mouse but actually encourages it to curve off a little bit which is a more natural position to have. Not only that, the back of the mouse actually curves up at a sharp angle and then shallows out towards the front. What this means is that this part of the mouse right here nestles beautifully in the palm of your hand and the rest of the mouse follows the curve of your palm right up to your fingertip. And I can tell you that in game, this felt great. Here's something else they've done. You see how the right mouse button just sort of follows the curvature of the rest of the mouse? Well, the left mouse button on the other hand has a little trough in the middle. It's actually scalloped out towards the middle. This is so that there's a gentle little trough for your forefinger to rest in. And I can tell you the combined effect of these things in game was so good that I have been using this mouse for the last two days straight and it has been an absolute eye opener. Now the buttons actually feel really good and clicky and solid. The mouse wheel feels fantastic. There's no wiggle and no shake. There's a tire tread to help you grip the mouse wheel a little bit better. There are two DPI switches to increase and decrease the DPI and there are three side buttons. 
Now the top two side buttons are actually really well placed. They're a little more right angled than I would have liked, but they are placed very well, easy to find. And here's another thing Red Dragon did to go that one step further. Notice the two side buttons. One of them is patterned and one of them is not. This is basically to help you find that without actually looking down or feeling around for it too much while you're in game. Usually I just look for the groove in between the buttons and figure out which is front and back. But if you're holding it at an odd angle in game for whatever reason, then in a pinch, this might just help you a little bit. It's that 1% extra that Red Dragon seemed to have gone. And this thing costs roughly the same as any of those. The difference between pricing of these devices is a couple of dollars max. Now there is a third button on the side, but it's placed far too forward for me and I kept forgetting it was even there. Now there's no RGB on this mouse, but there are two red LEDs, one in the mouse wheel and one in the back to light up the logo, to light up this little stripe over here and to light up the back end of the mouse. They have added another yellow LED in the mouse wheel. And this is just another one of those things that Red Dragon throws in for your convenience. You see the DPI button? If you click the DPI button to shift it, the yellow LED blinks. The number of times it blinks tells you which DPI mode you're in. You can also change the polling rate by holding down the middle and right mouse buttons for a few seconds and the yellow LED will tell you that as well. Clearly these guys seem to know what they're doing. So how does it perform in game? Well the short answer is it performs well for the most part and something worth pointing out is the sensor is not centered on the mouse it's actually off to one side a little and what this does is aligns that sensor to this part of my forefinger rather than the middle of my hand. I don't know if that really makes a difference I just thought it'd be worth pointing out. This mouse performed beautifully in game and it had a shorter lift of distance than the other two. Unfortunately, it did not pass the insane flick test. It had the exact same behavior as the other two when it came to absolutely insane flicks. And even at very high speeds, there was a little bit of a lag. Not a deal breaker in my opinion. This was still a very, very enjoyable mouse to use. And I would argue that the ergonomic feel of the mouse would more than compensate for its deficiencies in sensor. Now, if you still want a better sensor, there is another version that I will link down in the description below that has a smaller profile and is perhaps a lighter mouse but also gives you a sensor that goes to 4800 dpi and a polling rate of 500 hertz. In fact, that's the fifth mouse that I wanted to order but it never reached. I think it's fair to say that we've succeeded in finding mice that are good for everyday work, are great for gaming, have excellent ergonomics, and a proper low latency 2.5 gigahertz wireless connection. And all of it under $25.